You're presently I'm, sideways, which is interesting. I'm Paul. Are you? Hey, Jamie. How Jamie. are you? Oh, good, mate. You don't look any different. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel a little bit different. I appreciate that. Hey, Jules. Dallas, Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. How's you all? Oh, my God. This is freaky AF. Hey, hey, people. Hello, Glenn. Welcome, everyone, to the first ever uh, gathering on the 11th of March. Good to have you all. I'm going to uh, introduce everyone in the order they appear on my screen. I've got uh, James Ash. Please wait. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. Now, James, what were you doing in the third broadcast of Hits FM, mate? Um, well, I remember that the first half of it I actually missed, so I'm a little bit of an imposter here, but I remember when I, I was in the UK and I came back um, halfway through the broadcast and my dad picked me up from the airport and he said, you're not going to believe it. You remember that station that you were on broadcast to? I went, yeah. Um, he said, it's the biggest thing. I went, okay, really? He goes, no, you just, and he, and he pulled over. Um, driving back on the Tuller Freeway, and he made me listen to it. And I could tell the vibe was different. Now, next up on my screen, I've got uh, Andrew Jopper. You were the vice president <clears throat> back at that time. Tell us about your initial thoughts of Broadcast 3 of Hits FM. Well, you, you reminded me during a recent conversation that my initial thought of Broadcast 3 before Broadcast 3 is we couldn't possibly afford to do Broadcast 3. Um, it was a slight problem. <laughs> Good. Yeah, there were, there were a few problems, but, you know, turned out okay, didn't it? Yeah, it wasn't bad. Um, it, was, it was an amazing time. It was an amazing time for everyone in this Zoom, but, but for so many people. And, and I think... Um, I think we were always, I was certainly just um, floored by the, the, the traction we got, the attention we got, the, the changes that we seemed to make then and as a result of then. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, I guess for a lot of people, it was one of those overnight successes that we know took a hell of a lot of time and a hell of a lot of work and um, a hell of a lot of failures to, to, to get to that point, but it really was. And, and there were a few failures afterwards too, which is why, you know, we're not in a radio studio talking about this. But, but um, I mean, it was an in incredible ride and, and I certainly got a hell of a lot out of it. And um, it, was, it, was just, it was just an awesome thing to be a part of. Julie from our news department. Julie Doyle, welcome. Hello. Hello. Good to be Tell here. Tell us about your impressions of broadcast stream. Um... It was, uh, it was amazing. And, um, you know, I reckon I was pretty much there every day for the three months. Um, uh, I just loved every minute of it. And just the, you know, the friendships that we made and, um, and listening back to that last hour, the impact that we had, you just, you forget, like the years have gone by and I've, I've forgotten. And then listening to all those callers who were ringing up saying what it meant to them as well, like to be part of that, it was just so special. But um, it was just such a fantastic, memorable time. And, um, you know, I just learned so much from that broadcast. And yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll never forget it. There you go. Now, many of us in broadcast three had been there for at least broadcast number two, if not one. You know, six or 12 months prior, but um, you, Glenn, you were a new addition to the team yes. hosting our Power 20 Countdown, or as we called it, the Glenn 20 Countdown. Started off actually doing Saturday morning and Sunday mornings, um, six to nine. Um, I'd, I'd known Anton for a good few years. Um, to, you know, he started ball rolling with this thing. And he pitched it to me because we were doing community radio together. He said, oh, you know, I'm going to do this and that. And I'm going, oh, yeah. Yeah, pull the other one, whatever, all that sort of stuff, and um, gave it a go, and and it just this this thing, this this thing kept getting momentum. You know what I mean? It's like you, you go out of the office or you, you you leave the studio or the building for six hours, and you you have FOMO. You think you're going to miss out on something. You know what I mean? Um, there was nothing like it. There, no one was playing dance music like we were playing. It, it was all you know a battle of um the Eagles and ACDC and all that sort of stuff. You know, classic rock. Um, and then and we we. Just there was a niche there, and, and and it got filled, and um, it just just 
took off, took off like wildfire, you know, and, you know, we're, we're breaking stuff like Kevin Campbell and other stuff that, you know, Dr. All Band, all that sort of stuff that just never had been played on the radio at all, ever, before that. ask um, Miff Webster, what was the CD code for Dr. All Band Sing Hallelujah? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say nine twelve, but don't quote me on it. <laughs> what about Tevin Campbell? Eight seven two. Parallel by that, Beverly. It will be seven correct. six seven. Run DMC Mega Mix. <laughs> nine ten track two. Was either knows the catalogue really well or knows that none of us are going to remember. No. <laughs> well, I can go and get nine ten and wave it at you. Actually, no, I can't. Yeah. It's in the car. I, I wouldn't challenge Miff on this. It's <laughs> dangerous territory. But now speaking, Miff, you were um, one of the leading people in terms of the choice of music, which had such a massive impact. Would you like to tell us a bit about yeah. the music? I basically, I basically spent three months in a little cupboard of a room surrounded by piles of CDs. Um, a lot of what we did was driven by requests. Um, record companies had started talking to us a little bit after Broadcast 2 and letting us have some music, but so much of what we did was stuff that we'd bought and we'd brought in ourselves, So, which was just insane. And, I mean, Nick and I had found the milk bar near my new place where we had all these amazing <laughs> mixed CDs, which is just insane to do that. But then I think through the broadcast, the record company started talking to us a little bit more and actually started giving us music that they wanted to play. I'd also like to apologise to the whole world for some of the music we did play. Come on, which ones? <laughs> Geordie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Geordie, Geordie the four-year-old is... French kid, yes. Yeah. What's yeah. This? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and listening to it today, that Beverly track really just did not stand up. But I was so, so frustrated that there was just that one, we couldn't get the sign by Ace of Base. It didn't matter how hard we tried. We just couldn't. They wouldn't give it to us. So you, you ended up having to buy it, didn't you? Well, we had trouble getting it. We had to get an import. Mm. Because, you know, no iTunes or No iTunes, no like Spotify, that. no Napster. No. Speaking Just... of songs that we didn't like, uh, Daryl Ray listening to uh, you and I back together, because, of course, we had a, a break. We were not on the radio together for a month or two. Uh, then we were back for that one night only. At one point, I kind of say, yes, we're back. <laughs> our appalling background music playing underneath us, as always. Which and I still one have. One thing you mentioned, sorry? Which I still have on vinyl. I could actually go and pull it out. I should have grabbed it. I'd, we'll, <laughs> we'll, give you a, we'll give you a little break at one point. You can go and get your okay. velvet and the tea white and brass vinyl. That's, that's it. That's good. Yeah. Um, but one thing I, I was amused at or a little bit shocked by was your uh, <laughs> dislike of a certain uh, Dennis Leary song that we played during the countdown. <laughs> I've forgotten about your distaste for that particular track. <laughs> so and so had I until I heard that. Um, I kind of, and then I listened to it in full on that tape, and I can't believe that we. So that obviously charted, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then we played it, and it, some of the stuff in that song is just. It's, I'm getting as mad as I was back then. <laughs> <laughs> you, I was getting you? mad listening to it today because the radio edit edits out some words but then leaves other words in that you think wouldn't be mm. that you yes, would have thought yeah. would have been more problem and it really bugged me yes and Reference my husband walked in when i was thinking. listening to it and he's just like why did they edit that bit um, and Paul, you, you had a, a foot in both camps you were both announcing and also part of the news team and of course one of the big things for us in that third broadcast was the news coverage of what we were doing which just got bigger and bigger and bigger and, of course, that influenced what eventually happened on this night those years ago, March 11, where it was just such a big crescendo. It was a building momentum, wasn't it? You know, that, that the first few weeks, um, we, you know, we, we were, there was some impact, but then, yeah, media got on board, and that obviously so critical to get the word out. It's all we had, word of mouth. It's all we had um, before then the media coverage kicked it along. But... Uh, um, you know, no one's sending each other SMSs saying, yeah, here, listening to this radio station. It was all schoolyard chat and then, you know, I guess work chat for some people as well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the media coverage, I guess, gave us the confidence to know that we were 
hitting the mark. But I guess you knew that. I, I always remember walking in and the phones were just ringing simply non-stop. You would put the phone down. <laughs> the poor bloody phone <laughs> wouldn't have a chance to catch its breath. It would ring again straight away. Um, I, I we, think um, it was, we ended up breaking the phone exchange, the Moravian mm, phone exchange yeah. as a result. So yeah. many calls, yeah. yeah. But yeah. the building momentum, Paul, that you mentioned, I mean, I, I, I remember during that um, early on in that third broadcast, I got such a mm. kick when I went to a local service station, put petrol in my car and heard our radio station through their little PA system mm. for the first time. That was mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Had I known then what was going to happen a month or so later, I mean, yeah, who, who mm. would have known? You know, we were just we were just doing what we were doing for the fun of it and the love of it and because of the music and because of the people and the connections and it just went crazy. Yeah, I remember driving two hits for a shift or shifts, plural, and, you know, you pull up at the traffic lights because uh, it was summer and your windows would be down and the car next to you to have the hits on. Same kind of experience. But, geez, mm. that gives you an energy when you're going to do a shift when you think, wow. You know, people are actually uh, listening. And, and even, you know, some of us had jobs then and, you know, you'd go to work and people would say, oh, I heard, heard you're doing this or whatever. And you'd say, shit, I've never even talked to anyone here really about that. Here's Thank a question for everybody. How different do you think your lives would have been if you hadn't have had hits at that time in your life? Pretty different. No question. Significantly different. Mm. Yeah, that some of the mm. stuff I do today, I would never have done had I not gotten involved with this again. No question in my mind. Because Jobs Hit would have taught you about management and yeah. people skills, yeah. uh, you know, um, legal, you yeah. know, how to deal I, legally. I learned a lot of not, what not to do back then. Mm. For those times. <laughs> um, it, it did, it, you know. I wouldn't have known as a 20 year old what HR was, let alone how to manage people. And, and, and you know, a lot of what I do now is that. And, and you know, I produce community theatre shows and, 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 you know, that's, that's something that's sort of fed from, um, you know, the, 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 the Hits FM stuff. And, and, and yeah, it's, yeah, I, I think, I, I mean, I'm really interested to hear what other people have to say, but it's, 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 it's made a huge impact on my life. I always thought it did, but I didn't understand it until recently. I always thought that I was a radio person who happened to write, but it's only more recently I've discovered I'm a writer who happens to like radio. Mm. And Hits was where I got to grow as a writer, even though I wasn't thinking about it. So Daryl and I used to spend hours typing up these crazy intros for shows and I'd write the Barry and Ken sketches and whatever. And that was just me kind of, very flexing Ken, writing muscles yeah but <laughs> you don't realize at the time that you're just kind of growing in that skill mm. and i wouldn't was have Barry had it written yeah, kind of. scripted. Was it i thought they were real people yeah 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 they That's were I was, like, I, was like, documenting what, I was just documenting what i was just documenting what they said documentary yes <laughs> early reality television <laughs> yes like I think movies. I think what it I think what it taught me was about uh, about being uh, uh, quick to respond and and be spontaneous uh, interacting with other people um, mm. and to be creative um, and how to I guess um, not sm small talk's the wrong word but to keep a conversation de developing and engage with people. Um, which is something I still use, obviously, today, uh, as well, we all do. But it, um, in my job, you know, I, I need to have that quick retort and, and that fast brain moving in a conversation where you're listening and thinking ahead. And I kind of go back to community radio and hits and I go that that's where that that really that wheel started turning fast. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Sorry, we, we had no rules back then. We were making it up as we were going along. And the yeah. list also dictated what we did. You know, they, they, they set the agenda as well, pretty much. So it, it was, we didn't even know what we we're going to do the next day or the next week. We just wrote it, you know what I mean? Just wrote it out and, and it was just, you know, whatever, we just held on for dear life, you know, what was, whatever was going to happen. You know, who, who, would, who would have thought that, that, you know, what happened, you know, in the second or third month would have happened 
when we opened up that transmitter on day one of um, broadcast three. You know, so. mm. Julie, were you about to mention something? Uh, I was going to say, I think it taught me um, how, uh, how much I loved radio news. And obviously I'm still in news. Um, and, uh, you know, it taught me how to run a little news team. I was only like 19 years old, 20 years old or whatever. Now I run a larger news team, but, you know, it's, it's, it started me on that path. Um, yeah, it just inspired my passion for journalism because I was just doing it. Who gets to just go live on air and read news bulletins and write news stories when you're 19 years old and you're just messing around, you know, having fun with your friends? So I got to do that. So, yeah, so that's what I was going to say, Jamie. I think it sparked that and it gave me that, um, that passion and that push to keep going with um, what I wanted to do. As a and I guess if you can read a news bulletin while it's being set on fire, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everything is easy. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. still on her CV. <laughs> <laughs> it's still in court. Yeah. <laughs> it's on LinkedIn. There's a little endorsement button next to it. <laughs> Daryl, you used to you used to be kind of the nerve centre person at one of Melbourne's big talkback radio shows. Was there any of what you did there? Did that echo from being at Hits and having you know everything thrown at you and having to get radio going? No, I raised everything from Hits FM and started again. Good idea. <laughs> Control, alt, delete. <laughs> Twice, just to be sure. Just like a full flush and a double flush. Clear the, the case. Time. Yeah, yeah no, know, absolutely. I swear I've heard some Herb Alpert on 3AW once. <laughs> um, what, I, what I was going to say, just to derail a conversation, was... Um, I'm just blown away by this because I've got so much standby <laughs> tapes that I'm running off at the moment, right? And it, there is so much that we put, there's so much output, but it was 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we rostered people on yeah. all day, all night, you know, around the clock. I just can't imagine even starting to put something like that together these days. It's to be too much of a mountain. Yeah. Mm. Did you hear the funniest thing when um, in the last hour, Gabs, when you asked me um, on air about, you know, the news team and how we went, et cetera, and how many people were in the team? And I said to you, oh, that, yeah, there's 20 people in the team. We lost quite a few members when the school <laughs> finished and they had to go back to school. <laughs> oh, I laughed when I heard that because it's like they just summed it up. So, you know, half the news team had to go back to school. So yeah. <laughs> I remember that yeah, you and yeah. Miff both struggled with that with volunteers. Yeah, the school. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and, yeah. and, and when the news team was lost back to school, that was primary school. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, you, you. It was you radio mentioned, school. <laughs> Daryl, okay, rostering people, but but also all volunteers and all right. under thirty, most under twenty five. I mean, imagine right. trying to get that many people in today's whatever Gen Y or Gen Z. I've lost track. 25 year olds or younger right to do something like that i mean you know free. Free. <laughs> to commit yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah i actually think one of the things which was a strength about all of us at that time and and julie was talking about this a little bit earlier as well is yeah okay none of us knew quite what we were doing we were all working it out but our general naivety was actually a massive strength i think because mm. we, we hadn't yet learned how to doubt ourselves very much. Yeah. yeah, We didn't really think, oh, okay, oh, I don't know how to do that. Or why would someone possibly listen to me when they could listen to Ugly Phil? And we didn't have any of that. We just thought, well, why not? And of course, as you know, we're all in our 40s now. And I'm sure we've all got plenty of reasons to why not. But back then, it was like, well, yeah, let's just do it. Okay, sure. <laughs> you know, I've never done that before. And um, yeah, I think that was a real strength for us. Yeah, yeah just because yeah. you can, it, yeah, you're right. It came through so strongly. It was yeah. like, we're just going to give anything a try. And the one thing you could hear is we're all just prepared to do it and we're all having a good time. Mm. No, it was a good thing. It was a really good quality. Yeah. But listening back to it now in my 40s, I can you can hear it. And, and I remember that sense of, you know, that we were young and invincible. Like you can hear, you can hear that. And that was a great thing. So it's not a, not a bad quality. I remember the audience also having a growing 
frustration and disbelief that we were going to mm. go off air and mm. they just couldn't understand how the authorities wouldn't just let it happen. But here we were accelerating faster and faster with the mm. growing audience into a brick wall. And you know what, there are moments where it feels like a long time ago and, and then yeah times like tonight seeing all these faces again it it, it really it, it feels like it was just yesterday yeah yeah i yeah. found when listening to those longer recordings that i'm just there mm. Mm. Yep. Mm. yeah yeah decades yeah. have just evaporated um, so all right well while everyone's here what would happen if we all got together and did it again? <laughs> I've done the same thing. <laughs> let's do it tonight. Yeah, let's start tonight. Let's, let's go to that daddy dog. Let's play the same <laughs> music that we did and turn it into a podcast. And, you know, I mean, you know, you don't have to be cynical to see that we're going to be really rich if we do that. <laughs> well, clearly. <laughs> Can I just say, just as a very brief aside, though, we were talking about how special um, that music was for us, but I also mentioned how I hadn't really listened to a lot of it in the intervening years. But um, I'm fortunate enough to still be DJing, and many of those songs have recently been reissued and are getting another lease of life. Um, Rhythm of the Night Corona is, is one um, that has literally just been released again. Um, Rhythm is a Dancer, of course, has been, you would have heard many times over the years. And, um, and I myself did a cover of this right in the night recently as well. And um, um, yeah, so there was, you know, that music has actually demonstrated more longevity than maybe we would expect. Mm. We'd have a release of Corona spreading, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Everyone was thinking it. <laughs> yeah. Listening back to that, like saying to the listeners, oh, we're going to be back on soon and we're going to go to Canberra on Monday and we're going to lobby the federal government. We just had this amazing self-belief. We mm -hmm. just thought we could do it and we just thought we would be able to fight the system and that we would be able to stay on air because how could they take us off air because everyone loves us so much. And um, looking back on that now, I just think, yeah, yeah, we, we were young and naive. But, um, but that's but, what happened in Pump Up the Volume with Christian yeah. Slater. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd all seen that. As you guys said before, the whole naivety of everything, you know, we just thought we'd do this and, you know, change the world and, you know, just tell these guys up in Canberra, can, you know, keep it going, give us the, yeah. give us the license and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't worry yeah, about anyone stuff. else, just give us one. Can I um, bring a bit of a focus to this particular night back on 1994? Um, we were counting down from 3 p.m., the top 89 of the broadcast. And I think for the first time in history of radio, um, a whole bunch of people, for some reason, actually physically counted votes, thousands and thousands and thousands of votes to compile a top 89 songs. Listening to those messages in those mm -hmm. final three hours, the connection, the, um, the, the place we had in, in people's lives so quickly, because um, radio is so intimate, obviously, but, you know, people really were just soaking, soaking us up like it was a, a connection they probably never had with the radio station before. It just kept yeah. building and building and there were just more and more people there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many people we had in the music library at one point because everybody wanted to come and help with CDs and just move stuff around. And I don't think anyone could actually move in there. And, you know, Tevin Campbell's up there on the door. And there was a big... Um... <laughs> There was a big party out in the back back uh, car park oh. memory as well. Mm. Yes, Daryl. Just the noise. I forgot all about that, but um, the noise going through that window when we're on air is just mm. extraordinary. Everyone's just up there. Uh, everyone's just having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my one really clear memory of that night is at about twenty to twelve when Molly burst into the bin. That I can just, I can still see that really clearly. That's my, you know, one thing where he just kind of burst into the studio and we were all in there and it was just, yeah, just capped off the night, I guess. But um, he partied hard. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I love the way Gabs, even um, in that last hour when he said, Can I say one more thing? And you said, Oh, no, I'm sorry, the music's already started. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even let Molly talk when the music yeah. started. 
And Remember. Molly's microphone retracted into the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Just like at the Oscars. Because that's exactly the technology we had access to back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all very much for coming for hopefully the first Hits FM reunion Zoom. Thanks for organising it. Awesome effort. No worries. Absolutely. Yay. Yeah, thanks, Gabs. And Bit thanks for amazing. swearing, so I have to edit it all up. No worries. No <laughs> worries. No worries. <laughs> Ten. Nine. Nine. Eight. 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 Seven. 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 Six. Six. We got nine. Five. Five. Four. Four. Three. Three. Two. Two. One. One. Bye. We'll be back. Bye. We'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> Has anyone left? Yes, yeah. people have left. Bye. Oh, it's just me and you, dude. It is. We got rid of them at last. Oh, that was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny. Very funny. All right. Uh, uh, we'll talk soon. Absolutely. Thank you very uh, much. Good to see you. you. And go uh, make sure you colour in that poster. Yeah, yeah, I, I will. It's, it's, it's a real, uh, that's what's happening outside right now. Excellent. <laughs> See you, mate. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Hits FM has now left the Zoom.